over the last two years of doing all the road work, we had to take down a lot of trees. Back of the bucket against the tree and crunch. Today is the day that we start getting this property cleaned up. We're gonna start bucking all these logs up into saw logs or firewood logs, making two piles, milling our own lumber for a future building project and processing firewood. All right, we've got the first load of logs loaded. I'm gonna haul these over to the shop where we're gonna be setting up the sawmill. I can't believe that actually worked. I actually was able to dump them onto the dunnage. Everyone, meet Tyler. Tyler owns a custom sawmilling, tree falling, and excavation uh, business in the area, and he's gonna be helping me out mostly with the sawmilling. But since he's here, we're gonna take a few of the diseased and damaged trees down as well. So our goal for this project is to clean up all of the trees that are left over from our road project, take down the trees that are diseased, take down the ones that are dying, take down the ones that are affected by bark beetle and really try to clean our property up and focus on fire prevention. All right, well, while Tyler finishes cutting those into logs, I'm gonna go grab the excavator so we can get them loaded into the log truck. This is a day that I've been looking forward to for a long time. The sawmill is here, the logs are decked, and we're gonna spend the rest of the day making lumber from the trees that came right here off our property. What I especially like about this project is that most of these trees were either dead, diseased, damaged, or they were in the way of our road project. And now we get to turn these trees into usable lumber. This is gonna be fun. The mill is all set up and it's time to load our first log. With the log loaded, it's now time to get everything centered up. The idea is that Tyler's gonna be centering the center of the log on the blade to ensure that as we cut this into boards, the grain of the wood runs longitudinally along the board and makes for a strong board. If the grain were to go sideways across the board, that board would be super weak. That cuts way faster than I thought it was going to cut.
Just like that, the first log is down and we've got a lot to go. So my interpretation, the debarker has this uh, spinning wheel here with carbide inserts that that runs along ahead of the blade and cuts the bark, which gets any of like the rocks and the dirt and all the stuff that's ended up in that log so that the blade stays sharper a lot longer. The other features that Tyler mentioned are the lube, lube master. <laughs> that's this tank here with a special blend of water plus an additive that helps keep the blade lubricated and cool while cutting. As along with the simple set. So once the cant has been generated, the simple set automatically adjusts the height of the blade between each cut to make sure that we get consistent thicknesses and consistent lumber through our entire job. So cool. Oh my gosh, we're making lumber from trees on our property. Wow. Break time's over. We'd like to thank Bouge RV for sponsoring this video. We've been working some long days this summer and that means it can be hard to keep our camera gear charged. This 100 watt portable solar panel from Bouge RV has been just what we needed to stay ahead of the game. At only 10 pounds and with a convenient folding design, we can easily move this portable solar panel to wherever we're working. The zero to 45 degree adjustable tilt means we can always get it set up for optimal sun angle and the 9BB technology boasts up to 23% higher efficiency. Durability is important whenever I'm involved and so the ETEF impact resistant material combined with IP67 waterproof rating and a dustproof design is a great peace of mind. The universal MC4 connectors are compatible with all of Bouge RV's power stations plus other brands on the market as well. We've been pairing this solar panel with our CR Pro 30 plus 220 watt hour portable power station for the ultimate luxury job site. Bouge RV is dedicated to bringing the modern lifestyle to the outdoors. If you'd like to learn more about this solar panel and all of Bouge RV's products, head to the link in the description below. And thanks again to Bouge RV for sponsoring this video and keeping us powered this summer. property has been logged before, which means that pretty much all of the primo trees have already been taken. And we're sort of working with the, the leftovers that the loggers didn't want. So a lot of these trees have defects such as wind shake. So you can see this, this sappy ring here and the, the gap right here. At some point in its life, this, this tree likely sustained some, some significant damage, probably from being overstressed in the wind, which caused the center of the tree to crack. It's since grown around that and tried to repair that spot by pumping it full of sap but it means that that whole piece of the tree we really can't use for lumber and we're gonna have to cut around it which means it's gonna significantly hurt the yield on this log which is too bad because this is like one of our biggest straightest logs of the whole bunch what we'll end up doing with this shake piece here is I'll actually plan to cut dunnage out of it so when they can come in with the skid steer later and then be able to set it on this piece that's kind of not gonna make good lumber but we can still utilize it 
So in its first life, it'll become dunnage. In its second life, it'll probably become like kindling for the wood stove or something like that. So we're still gonna make use of it. Using some of the scraps to cut stickers now because as we stack this wood up, we wanna make sure that there's a sticker between each layer to allow airflow through so that this wood can dry. These are centered, which makes for the best lumber. And then I can pull the flitch off of here, here, and here as I go. Trying to make the most out of every log isn't always easy, especially because everything has to get divided out into, we're making all either two by sixes or two by eights. Right out of the center of this tree, we're gonna take two by sixes going this direction, but at the same time, we're also gonna take a few out of here and then a few out of here. All right, I hope I get these terms right, but bear with me. We made the first cut to square it up, then a second cut and cut off the flitch, which is gonna end up getting recut again. Then it got flipped to 90, and now we're gonna square off the other side. So the goal now is going to be to turn this chunk here into a five and a half inch wide piece that we can then slab off into two by sixes. That piece goes to the garbage pile, and then there's going to be a next cut that's going to get tossed off to the sides, which is going to get resawn. This goes to the garbage pile. These two pieces get tossed off to the side. They're going to get recut, and then this piece here, that's going to get flipped that way and get slabbed into two by sixes. All right, so now that the cant has been processed into two by sixes, it's time to take care of the flitches. So we brought those three back up, stacked them on, and now those are gonna get cut down into two by sixes. There's a lot of steps to this process. All right, 30 12 foot 2x6 is down, plus a lot of other odds and ends. Day four here at the log yard, we have three cedar trees left. We left the cedars to the end and we've been making a combination of four by four posts. Those are gonna be for a fence project along with a whole bunch of one by boards that could be used in the future for siding or we're not really sure what, but I'm pretty excited to be done with this project. It's been a whole lot of fun, but it's also been a whole lot of work. And we're done.
That was a tremendous amount of work, but we've got a lot of lumber. So we've got one by cedar, one by dug fir, 16 foot two by sixes, a random like two by eights, eight foot two by sixes, and finally our biggest stack of 12 foot two by sixes, along with a healthy number of four by four posts over here. And last but not least, I almost forgot about these, the precious 16 foot Tamarack posts, 16 foot six by 12 beam, and a cool piece of live edge slab. In the end, we ended up with way more lumber than we needed to accomplish this project I have in mind, and I'm pretty stoked on that. Well, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.